Um, take a second very quickly in your notes. We're going to take just a, a minute here before I bring on David Childers. I want you just to stop for a second and I want you to write down what are the one or two or three things that I am going to do that is going to generate, like, what's the fastest thing? What's the easiest thing that I can do? And then for many of you, because you're so advanced, I see so many of our coaching clients here, you're going to go for a little more of the advanced stuff. But we want to be mindful. We don't want to get overwhelmed. We're only halfway through. I've got David Childers coming up next with all of the market updates you need to be the knowledge broker that are going to help you create more content and be more informative and become the obvious choice. Then we're going to buyer agency and we know how important that is today with Coach Christy. And then we're going to finish with a little bit on just, hey, what's happening with all these lawsuits from the guy that knows it better than anybody else, Jack Miller. Now, we're halfway through. I know that went very quick. So, so I wrote down a note for everybody and, and I, I want you just to, in your notes, write this down. If, if you don't have to put any comments, just, just kind of you and I have a conversation. Don't worry about typing anything. Just stay with me. If you're already feeling slightly overwhelmed, right? It goes back to the question of, you know, when I asked you earlier today, hey, is your, is your marketing plan a five out of five or does it sit somewhere around a one? The, the challenge that I think many of us face in an environment like this, when you get all these ideas, plus all the ideas that you already had, the question I like to ask people is this, do you, do you find yourself, do you get more done when you have more support? You don't have to, I don't have to see it in the comments, just, just in your mind. Do you get more done when you have someone supporting you? Do you get more done when you have more structure? The answer is, of course I do, right? Like I, I think about, you know, this morning going to the gym, like I didn't want to go to the gym, but I know I've got a trainer there. So I know I've got to show up and, and it's funny, like I know how to go to the gym. I know go to the gym, work out, do my thing. But when I'm with my trainer, right, I seem to push harder. I seem to do more, but here's what's also great about it. What's also amazing about whether it's Oscar here or Brad back in California is both of them have unique insights. They're the ones that are, they're looking subtly at the way I'm doing it. And they're monitoring my food. They're monitoring my sleep. They're paying attention to the details. They're going to help me have more energy, have more vitality, live longer, be in a better state. And, and look, I don't know about you, but like, I know I should diet and exercise. I know I should eat great and I should exercise more. You know it and I know it. And yet, because I have the structure of Oscar here and Brad there and, you know, Mary who comes and gives me IV drips, because I've got the structure in place, they know so much more about it that I don't have to. I get to just keep doing my work, keep following my schedule, keep making my calls, keep doing the things I got to do. And I've got these outsiders that are making sure that I'm paying attention to the details, that I'm doing the right thing, that I'm doing the right number of reps, that I'm pushing extra hard, that I'm going the extra mile, that I'm doing the things I need to do to stay healthy, to stay with great vitality. Well, my friend, that's how I look at 2024 in your business. If you know you do better with support, if you know you do better with structure, right? If you know that, you have to ask yourself, what am I going to put in place in 2024 to give me the support I need, to give me the structure I need? And maybe just maybe like someone like a Jason or a Jimmy who can continue to give me the insights I need. So we did a little survey of our clients in December, right? So every month we bring on, you know, new coaching members, you know, every single month. And lots of our coaching members are here. Matter of fact, one of my coaches, Larry Webb, was just talking about losing 59 pounds since the summit last year. God bless you, Larry. I'm so proud of you. I, I can't wait to see less of you more often. Here's, here's what I know, my friends. I actually wrote it down. If you know you do better when you're supported, if you know you do better when you know you've got structure in place, like you've got to show up, you got to perform, you got to do it. And then you've got someone that's super insightful that knows what to do. Then you're going to get better results. So the note that I wrote down is in our survey of just our December clients, right? Just the people that joined us in December, they called us and said, Hey, I know I need help. You know, the market's getting better. I want to get ahead of the curve. There was three things that people wanted us the most. And I'm curious how this will resonate for you. The number one thing that we asked them, why did you join us? They said, I need to save time. 
And now we can interpret that a lot of different ways. We said, well, what do you mean? They said, I know that if I don't know how to do it, I'm going to do it wrong or I'm going to take too much time to do it. I'm going to waste too much time. The market's getting better. The rates are coming down. I got to make way more money this year. I've got to save time. Make sure you get me a coach that can help me save time in 2024, right? Save time. Don't waste your time. The second thing was they said, I need to save money. Last year was hard, right? So I can't afford to spend money on things that don't work. And I can't afford to spend my time on things that don't work. So whether it's reviewing my budget and helping me make adjustments, or it's just simply look at what I'm doing and don't let me do dumb stuff. Hold me accountable, coach. Help me save more time. Help me save more money. And of course, the third one was obvious. Hey, I need to make more money in 2024. I have to make up for last year. I have to make up for last year. I got to pay off some debts. I got to save more money. I got to invest more money. I got to put myself in a better position. So if you are like the hundreds of people that joined us in December, I'm going to make you guys a little bananas offer. I want you to call my office, right? Put up the number. It's 1-800-624-9575. 1-800-624-9575. They're going to put it up on the screen. 1-800-624-9575. You call my office. I'm going to give you, you know, till the end of today. So you can call them right now if you want, because the phones are going to be busy. And I know a lot of you are interested. And Jessica, I love you. I'm in coaching. I know. So you're going to love this. When you call my office, I want you to say one of two things. And you're going to decide what's right for you. You're either, you're either going to say, I need a marketing coach. I need a marketing coach like Jimmy or Jason, someone that can make sure that I'm executing on the marketing because I'm good with contracts, I'm good with clients, I'm good with negotiations, I'm organized, I need a marketing coach. And you're gonna say that, and then we're gonna go through the 237 business coaches we have, and we're gonna get you a marketing coach, right? To make sure that that is what you get fulfilled on to save you time, to save you money, and to make you money. Or you're just gonna say, make me a bananas offer. 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 And the bananas offer is we're going to make you a crazy offer to make it a no-brainer for you to become one of our coaching clients. Now, this would be the most bananas offer we do all year. So it's January. I would encourage you, like, you know what I would say to you? It's, it's the metaphor that I use all the time. Before I bring up David Childers in a minute, it's the metaphor I use all the time, which is I say to myself, I can cut my own hair, but I don't. It's the same reason that when my wife says, hey, we should sell that duplex, like, you know, I could, I could probably list it for sale by owner. First of all, wouldn't that be hysterical if Tom Ferry listed one of his properties for sale by owner? Like, you would all like kill me, right? But, you know, there's a percentage of the population that simply thinks they can do it on their own, right? That they can simply do it on their own. And yet, we know what happens when you hire an expert, when you hire a professional, and you get someone like my trainer, Oscar, or Brad, who understand the nuances, get to know me, get to know the details, then they bring all that skill set and all that expertise to help me achieve my goals. So if you want that, if you're as committed as I am to 2024, I encourage you to call my office. At the minimum, you have to call and say, hey, let's schedule an appointment. I want to talk if you want the bananas offer, but you have to do it today. If you do it tomorrow, it's just regular coaching, just like the 18 people that signed up yesterday. So this is a nuts offer for you. You say, I want a marketing coach, or just make me a bananas offer. Either one is fine. And we're going to get you the right coach for you to ensure your success. All right. Now, with all that said, don't be a FISBO in 2024. What are the most important things you're going to need to do, right? So someone said, if you got an email for those people that are not in America, you can call my office. If you're not in America, we coach people all over the world, right? Here's the deal. You ready? One thing we know is the knowledge broker, you heard Jason say it, Jimmy say it, I've said it. The knowledge broker is the one that is more likely to help more customers because they know the facts, they know the data, they can tell people this is what the best people are saying. And when someone says, I read this article and I read this headline and it said the whole world's falling apart, you know what to say because you've got the facts and you've got the data. And that's what David Childers is going to bring us today. So, I just looked and there is David Childers. So David, are you ready? We've got thousands of rock stars from around the world. Everybody needs to know what to say in this market to help people move forward. Nobody better than my friend, 
Also, another man wearing a sweater with glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Looking good, my friend. David, thank you so much for being a part of this. God bless you in advance and take it away, my friend. I give Sounds you Sounds good. Floor. Thank you, Tom. I'm excited to be here and get to spend just a few minutes about, you know, talking about starting big. You know, here we are in January and looking forward to uh, the year. You know, what is today? The 18th uh, of January. We've got the entire year in front of us. And we can make decisions just like we just talked about Jason's session and what Tom said, the discipline to understand what's happening in this market. And I hope over the next you know, 30 minutes or so, I'll be able to give that to you because let, let me tell you what I see right now. I have a chance to certainly in December and even this month to spend time talking to agents. And, you know, if you were to think about this from an economic term, you know, we deal in a lot of you know, economic uh, data and, and housing market data here at Keeping Current Matters, there's a term they use um, in the business that is called an anchoring bias. And what an anchoring bias is, it's sort of this thought that what happened in the past is going to then uh, portend what's going to happen in the future, right? So if I have an anchoring bias in my mind of the last six months, I'm going to allow that to then influence me in this new year. Here's the thing I came to say to you. Don't look in the rearview mirror right now. Look ahead. And my goal over the next few minutes is to give you a perspective on this market. And I hope it's one that um, you take. And, and if you have a team, you share it with your team. If your team is all on here today, that you make a commitment to get this out into the world, to get it out into the hands of the buyers and sellers, the folks that you're working with, so that they understand what's going on. So that literally you can explain what's happening in this market and we have that ability. So as always, I'm gonna share my slides. I've got a great uh, uh, group of slides here that our team here at Keeping Current Matters has put together for this uh, event. You know, every time I get a chance to do something with Tom, I know I'm speaking to leaders, I'm speaking to um, the best of the best that are out there. And I want to go through this to give you that forward looking perspective on this market, okay? So let's start here. Uh, I'll give you just a little bit of, uh, of that perspective right here. Let's we'll start with this. Most agents know what's happening. I think we'd agree with that, know what's happening in the business. Good, under, good agents understand what's happening right now, but great agents can explain what's happening. And that's our goal at Keeping Current Matters, to equip you, to give you the information so that you can explain to your ecosystem, your database, your buyers, your sellers, anybody that you're talking about, you say you think about buying or selling a home, that you can explain exactly what's happening. You know, one of the best things you can ever ask someone when maybe a topic comes up of prices or inventory or mortgage rates is, share with me what you've heard. Tell me what you've heard. Because like Tom said, there's so much misinformation out there. There's so much that maybe is, is captured in a headline or captured in uh, an area that people look at it and they go, you know what, I, I, I heard that this thing wasn't going well. I, I heard that I shouldn't buy a home. Or, or maybe I even in the last month came in contact with some of my family that said I wouldn't do it right now. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll work for the next few minutes and we'll talk about that because right now we sit on the front end of 2024. And I have this sort of this magnifying glass here, the, the bullseye to hit the bullseye. I think there are two key things right now you have to have. And I would write these down. If you've got something to write with, go ahead and grab it. Uh, and there, there are two words that I wanna give you. One, the word, first one is confidence. Do I have the confidence that I understand what's happening in the business right now? And I'll give you my perspective. I'll give you Keeping Current Matters perspective coming up here in just a minute on, on what we will see coming this year. But I have to have the confidence that I understand it. Today, I, I'm going to share a lot of information. You don't have to uh, agree with everything I'm going to say. But what I always want to try to convey is have a relevant market opinion based upon a fact not just an opinion, right? And if I have it based upon facts, I can then be confident. I can have the conviction to, stay, to, 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 to share that with somebody that I'm working with. Second word I, I would add, courage. For us to step out into this market, 
if we're confident in it, we then can have the courage to have the conversation, to, to, to make the calls, to, to do what we want to do, you know, to put, to put content out in the market. You know, if you follow Keeping Current Matters on Instagram, we've posted several pieces of content over the last several weeks. I would watch those, uh, the, those posts and say, okay, this is something that's really uh, taking off. It's causing a lot of conversations, causing a lot of interaction. And I would then model some of the posts that I have after that. Certainly want you to become a KCM member and use uh, that content. And I'm going to give you a great opportunity to, to, to become a KCM member. If you've thought about it, or maybe you were in the past, because here's what I will tell you about this year. KCM members are going to have a front row seat to this market turning. It's already starting to happen. And I'm going to show you that in, in some of the things that we see coming up uh, this year but you're going to be able to be on top of it with the discipline to understand what's happening. So let's hop into this real quick. What do we believe about this year? This year will be the year of the fives. Three points real quick. Mortgage rates will be in the fives in the second half of the year. And I'm going to show you why uh, I'm making that statement, why I believe that second five and a half million uh, in total home sales, that's existing home sales, new home sales, and we believe the approximate uh, home price appreciation rate will be 5% this year. You're the fives, okay? And a year that certainly, I believe, will be better than 2023 incrementally. And I want to I I maybe position your mind before I hop into all this with a charge for you. You know, when I was in college, I had an um, unbelievable opportunity, my wife and I did, to work for a leadership author named John Maxwell. Some of you may have heard John or read a book um, that John wrote, phenomenal uh, leadership teacher uh, and, uh, and probably one of the best uh, around. And, and he, he had a, a quote that he would always use that oh, it stuck in my mind, even to this day. And I grabbed it for uh, our time together right now to share it with you. And he said this, he used to always say, a leader is one who knows the way who goes the way, and who shows the way. And that's our job today. I'm going to give you everything today, hopefully, where you can take a look at it and go, okay, I know the way. Then you got to walk in that direction. You know, Jason gave you a, a, a ton of ideas just a moment ago. I, I had a chance to, to sit in on, on some of that, um, to, to walk in that direction, to implement. And then my job, if I'm, if I'm listening, if I'm you, Show others the way, show my team and my own way and help them see their way forward in this market. Okay. I'm convinced if we can do that, we can make a difference. We will go forward confidently in this market, have the courage to step into it. Okay. So let's start right here. Mortgage rates will be in the, in the fives in the second half of the year. Now, this is, this is interesting. I'll give you a couple of, you know, sort of perspectives on why we believe that and what we see happening. But first we'll start here. Mortgage rates continue to hover in the mid-6% range and kind of see that bouncing around based on the economic data that may come out one day or another. But here's what we can tell. Sometime in, the, in early November, late October, rates, the 30-year fixed rate peaked and has been on this downward trend coming into the year. Right. And whether, you know, six and three quarters, six and a half bouncing around in that area, we've seen a lot uh, of improvement there. You know, we, we did a, um, a video. You can go on Keeping Current Matters Instagram. Uh, it was about two weeks ago on the average mortgage payment has improved by just over three hundred dollars since that point of the 30 year fixed peak uh, fixed rate peaking. We need to be talking about that. Everybody for the last year has talked about how affordability has been challenged over the last year's rates have risen. We need to be vocal. And I think it's something this year we have to do to help people see, okay, we are getting improvements in affordability. We are getting improvements in the cost of borrow money to buy a home. Dean Baker said this. He said, it also appears that mortgage rates are falling. They will almost certainly not fall to pandemic lows. Nobody's calling for that although we could soon see rates under 6%, which would be low by pre-Great Recession standards. So when I say I believe we'll be in, five, in the fives in the second half of the year, that might be 5.99, but I believe we'll be there. And, and I believe our job right now is to be ready to be working for when that comes. 
You know, I, I was uh, in New York City yesterday with a, a great partner of ours, and somebody asked a question. You know, I, I hear from a lot of people, is this frenzy gonna, gonna come back in the market? And I wanna address that. Nobody's calling for rates to go down to two and three quarter like we saw uh, during the pandemic and post pandemic. But, but certainly psychologically, we get back into the fives, we see more activity. Maybe not to the degree of what we saw two years ago, but more activity. Why do we believe we're heading in that direction? Well, one, one instance is Goldman Sachs. We now forecast three consecutive 25 basis uh, cuts in March, May, and June on the Federal Reserve, on the Fed funds rate, to reset the policy rate from a level that Powell has recently taken to describe as well into restrictive territory rather than just restrictive. So we'll see if that holds true uh, in, in coming up, but no doubt the forecast for this year is the Federal Reserve will begin cutting the Fed funds rate. Certainly that will be uh, an indication that we're moving through some of the inflation, some of the issues that we face as an economy. That will then bode well for the 30-year fixed mortgage rate. Two things that I would tell you, if you want to be the expert in mortgage rates, and I'm not suggesting anybody uh, needs to come in and become a secondary market expert on mortgage rates, but you have to know this for sure. For the last 50 years, the 30-year fixed mortgage rate has moved in unison with the 10-year treasury rate. You know, they have this sort of this symbiotic relationship as one moves, as the 10-year treasury uh, yield moves, then the 30-year fixed mortgage rate moves. The average spread you see in the middle here uh, is 1.72. 172 basis points. If you literally took the 10-year treasury, added 172 basis points, you would get the approximate 30-year fixed mortgage rate. Well, in January right now, where are we at? 263 basis points if you see this uh, this orange block here. Now we're, we're you know almost a hundred basis points above the average. We believe that will come down. We'll get some relief there, okay, in the spread. So we'll get some relief in the, in the, in the tenure and we'll get some relief in the spread. and oh by the way, it's already happening. The average spread going back to the beginning of last year was 2.83. It sits at 2.63 right now. We've already seen a 20 basis point reduction in that. That is a good thing. That's why I can optimistically say, okay, we see the technical signs in the second half of the year that we will be into the fives. Okay. As we look forward to that, I think getting that message out, talking about the improvements in affordability, talking about the improvements, uh, the, the, what, what that means for folks that are looking. You know, we, we did a, um, uh, a, a graphic that I'm going to show you just in, in a moment about the number of people last year that gave up their home search due to mortgage rates. So we're, we're, we're going to look at that because that will change this year. Okay, so technical signs there, see, see us getting in the fives in the second half of the year. Second, five and a half million total home sales. That's, that's existing home sales, that's new builds. And, and, and let's talk about that for just a moment. Our job is to be out in the market, to be active in the market so that we can help build inventory and have an impact on this number. You know, the, probably one of the biggest preventers uh, of inventory coming into the market uh, are those that have a preferable mortgage rate. Uh, I, I'm always astounded when I see this graphic. 78.7% um, of current loans, FHA, FH, FHFA, it's easy for me to say, um, at time of origination are less than 5%. That's unbelievable. Almost 80% of loans at time of origination under 5% and good for those homeowners, that's a very, very good thing, right? And they've said, hey, we're, we're not going anywhere. Now, there are people that will. You, you, you have a life event, you have a child, you have something happen in your life where you say, okay, we have to now make a decision because of that. People absolutely will. And, and, and I'll take it further. If you have a low rate, that probably means you're sort of locked in. You know, there's this term in the business uh, of rate lock, which I'm not talking about locking a rate on a, on a new um, a purchase, but people are locked in their homes because of the rate. You know, if you have something, a 30-year fixed under 3%, you're not selling. You're like, I'm good. I'm going to wait. If you're three to four, you're probably not doing it. Four to five, you're going to think about it. That's why we believe, hey, we get in the fives, we get, we get sort of psychologically, people start to go, okay, 
I, I want to do something different here. Well, Lance Lambert ha had a very interesting take on this, and I want to give that to you because he said this. He said, we might be at peak lock-in effect, meaning rate lock on people. Some move up or lifestyle sellers may be coming to terms with the fact that 3 and 4% mortgage rates aren't returning anytime soon. If the lock-in effect eases up, further in 2024, it could help boost existing home sales from the very low levels experienced at the end of 2023. So you, you think about the number of homes that have a preferable interest rates, we're starting to see, okay, rates come down, we could be at that peak lock-in effect in the rear view mirror. I'm not saying that there aren't people that aren't gonna make that decision, but certainly that will ease up. It'll sort of thaw as we go into, uh, into this year. Erica Flemons from Bright MLS said, homeowners who are selling aren't influenced by rates. With 90.5% of successful November sellers stating they were going to sell regardless of what mortgage rates were. Okay, so, so folks selling or saying, hey, we, we got to do it for one reason or another, life event, whatever the case is, we've got to sell. Now, here's the graphic that I, that I talked to you about. I would grab this and I'd take a picture of it right now as I show it to you here in just a minute and, and put it on social media tag Tom, tag Keeping Current Matters, you know, and, and, and get the message out there. But Bright MLS did a survey and, and, and looked at buyers that paused their decision to buy a home over the last 12 months. And the number one reason for pausing buying a home was mortgage rates. 72% of buyers paused their decision to, to, to buy a home because of mortgage rates. Now that makes sense. But here's what I will guarantee you, that will change this year. That will absolutely change. Because we see this environment where rates are coming down, people will say, okay, we didn't do it last year, that term or, or that reality of pent up demand, people that put off making a decision. You, you know, one of the best analogies I, I've ever heard from KCM founder Steve Harney is we're not uh, McDonald's, we're an Apple store. You know, in, in the analogy is a, we live in a town and a big snowstorm comes in and, and sort of blankets the town. Well, if you own the McDonald's, you lose breakfast, lunch, and dinner that day when the town shut down. People don't make a decision um, to not eat during that time. They just eat at home, right? They don't go out. They don't go uh, and, and, and go to a local restaurant because they can't. Well, if you own an Apple store, what do people do? If you were going to buy an iPad that day, you just de delay that. You buy it the next day or the next day, whenever you can get back out of your house. We're not a restaurant. We're the Apple store. Just because people abandoned their search last year because of mortgage rates, that doesn't mean they said, we're not going to ever do anything. They just said, okay, we're not going to do it right now. And I believe that will be a driver, not only of buyers in the market, but we know from uh, certainly statistics, the majority of buyers are also sellers. That'll free up inventory. You know, one of the areas that, that will contribute to sales this year, no doubt, and one of the areas that uh, I think has been a bright spot who's won in this market are builders. You know, if you look at the National Association of Home Builders, they say the market currently requires a higher level of new construction inventory due to a persistent lack of resale inventory. So builders are trying to build as fast as they can and newly built homes, listen to this, available for sale accounted for 31% of total home sales available for sale in November compared to an approximate 12% historical average. No doubt builders are winning. Why are they, why are they winning? They're taking concessions from the sale, applying those and buying down rates where people can get in a home. They can get a preferred rate. Builders have done it well this past year. And, you know, a lot of times, whether, you know, if you're listening today, you know, and, and you've, you've had a hesitation of working with builders for one reason or another, if, if you have a seller that's going to go into new construction, you free up that, that inventory. That's the bottom line. And so I think, I think looking at, Who's in your market? Who's building? What are they doing? And being educated, being vocal about that is critical. You know, one of the things that I said, and I believe this with all my heart, we sit right here in January with a front row seat to this market starting to turn. 
right? Not that we're going to see tomorrow or, or the next week, uh, you know, return to the frenzy that we saw in the last couple of years, but you shouldn't expect to wonder, I wonder what next month is going to hold for real estate this year. You should expect for the market to get better each month incrementally better, not overnight, not, not, not some, you know, scenario here that's not, not attainable, but for things to improve. And, and in the rear view mirror in 2023 to improve drastically over that. The reason I bring that up is I want to give you a, a chance to join KCM. Maybe you, you were a KCM member in the past. Maybe you've thought about it, but if you go to trykcm.com, you can take a picture of this slide and hit it uh, later today trykcm.com forward slash Tom Ferry, there's an offer for you to become a KCM member, to be educated in this market. We're going to do everything we can to give you everything you need to be the knowledge broker, to be the one that understands and says, hey, let me share with you what's happening with prices. Let me share with you what's happening with mortgage rates, with inventory, with all the things that we know are important for somebody that's looking to buy a home. You know, I, I always say this, I'm here in our office, in Richmond, Virginia, uh, today broadcasting live. And there's a wall in here that says, we believe every family should feel confident when buying and selling a home. And that's what drives us. That's what drives us every single day to give you what you need to make a difference in those that you serve. And so I hope you'll take it, take us up on that. Go check it out. If it's not right for you, you certainly can cancel your free trial, but, but, Get the information you need to make the impact with those that you're working with. Our last point here, and in about five, five minutes or so, I'll turn it back over to Tom. I know Jeremy Davis is coming up. Uh, amazing, amazing information with Palm Agent. Love Jeremy and uh, all that he does. But 5% will be the approximate home price appreciation rate. You know, it's, it's so interesting to sit where we sit right now, having just wrapped up 2023 you know, as we were wrapping up 2022, people said homes are going to lose 5, 10, maybe more uh, in value over the next 12 months. And we didn't see that happen. I, I think because of a lot of different factors, but, 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 but certainly the lack of available inventory across the country has kept upward pressure on prices. You know, it, it kind of drives prices up. Matter of fact, uh, we're starting to look at, you know, some of the same home sales wrapping up this year. It runs in arrears, and I'll talk about it here in just a minute. But we're going to have a good year this year, somewhere 6 or 7% in home price appreciation nationally. That's a far cry from what, you know, sort of folks on YouTube or uh, people that were out there talking about the doom and gloom of the business got massively wrong coming into 2023. Nobody's talking about that, right? You can, you, you can be wrong all those times and, uh, and, and sort of get away with, with it. But what we want to do is we want to have the information so that we can counter that narrative. Because listen, it will be talked about in the, our business. It will absolutely be talked about. Our choice, our job, I would say, is to be the one that's talking about it. So I have, uh, from CoreLogic said, with mortgage rates dropping, demand for homes in early 2024 is likely to be strong. And will again put pressure on prices. Remember that upward pressure on prices growing, similar to trends observed in early 2023. Most markets will continue to reach new home price highs over the course of 2024. So, so what are experts saying about home prices? Let me give that to you. This is a, a graphic that a lot of people want to use and want to get out there. I'd grab a picture of it uh, if you're watching today and say, hey, look, I'm, I, if you have a question about home prices, let's sit down, let's talk about it. And it's this right here, the eight um, forecasters that we survey and we track here at KCM. Here's what they're saying. A couple saying uh, slight depreciation, the other six saying appreciation, the average of 1.6. Tom, I, I see you back on now. I think they're wrong. Let me be clear. I, I think they're wrong. I think we'll see about 5% home price appreciation coming up this year. And I also think forecasters are a little bit nervous right now to say we don't, we don't, we don't want to stick our neck out there. We don't want to be the one to say something. Or, or to maybe be more bullish on that. But that is, is a number that we're going to stay on top of for you so that you can then show people what, what's going to happen with home prices. You know, the other um, uh, survey that we like to look at 
is the home price expectation survey. And they say, okay, what's gonna happen now and for the next five years? And if you see this 2023 through 2028, very normal home price appreciation for the next five years. So does it make sense to buy a home right now? Well, if it's the right time for you and you can afford it, absolutely. But there's this narrative, there's this thought from a lot of people that, gosh, I don't know if I'd do it right now. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen to prices. And yet when you start to look at all the signs, everything out there, we know that we're in a very you know, forward-looking normalized market. On the average home bought in this country, that's worth about $72,000 in equity. And certainly there, there are a, a boatload of non-financial uh, benefits uh, to buying a home, but the financial ones are there. Now there's, there's also this topic in a lot of places right now where people say it's cheaper to rent than to buy. And there's, there's, there's validity to that argument, but I will tell you the one thing that always will torpedo that, and it's equity. Whenever you add equity to the conversation, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. So remember that as people are talking about, should I rent, should I buy, it's cheaper to rent. Well, not when you add equity. Anybody that lives indoors, listen, anybody that lives indoors makes a mortgage payment. They either make theirs or their landlords. That's the truth. And we want to help people make a wise decision. You know, I talked about this past year, this is a look at Case Shiller and FHFA. We've seen, we've turned the corner in prices in this country relative yep. to real estate. Be confident in that. Be confident in being the knowledge broker about that. Home price gains in the CoreLogic S&P Case Shiller Index have increased by about 7% since the beginning of the year and are 1% higher than at the peak of 2022, recovering all losses recorded in the second half. So here's what I'll wrap on. Tom, Tom's back up. We can talk for a minute there, there Tom, but a couple of things over the next 90 days. Start this year off big. Stay focused, realizing this is an election year and housing will be fodder that both sides will use to distract people, to say, this is the reason you can't buy a home. This is what's going on with, uh, with mortgage rates. This is what's happening. And our job is to get the truth out there to become an expert on everything real estate. Be the expert, be the knowledge broker on everything. Third, broadcast the mortgage rate and its impact on affordability. That is a big topic. Homes became, I told you just in the last couple of months, $300 on average per month, more affordable. That's huge. That's really, really good. And stay focused on action and education. It's all about action. It's all about being the educator in this market to be able to deliver the confidence that is needed for people to make a powerful decision in what they do. So Tom, I'm going to, I'm going to pause right here. Anybody that, that is interested in saying, I want to become a KC member, we want to invite you in because I will tell you, I'll go back to what I said. You'll get a front row seat to watch this market turn and be out That's in it. front of it with the best information. That is it. That is it. David, thank you so much. I mean, you know, you and I spent so much time trying to help people, whether it was through the pandemic, before the pandemic, and now after with Roadmap and everything else we've done, you know, I'm the, yeah. just the biggest fan. I am so grateful for you. Um, you know, we got people from all over the world watching right now. So I know for some of my friends are like, oh, where do I get this information for, you know, my country in Europe or for Mexico? Google, 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 Google. And then hopefully one day KCM will get to every country around the world and help you guys. <laughs> um, David, I heard a funny line recently from one of my clients uh, when asked, hey, is now a good time to buy? His response was, has there ever been a bad time to own? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. And I thought, you know what? There's a lot of smart agents out there. They're going to use that exact same line. All right. We got to keep moving, David. Thank you so much. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Try kcm.com forward slash Tom Ferry. Let's keep going. Now, Jeremy Davis, my dear friend, Jeremy, there he is up next.